Hello everybody, Dr. White back again with some tips on getting started with the DA for Open Intro Statistics Section 2.2, Categorical Variables. So um, here we are in our studio. We're moving from studying the section, slide, screencast, uh, taking a look in the textbook, to working on the assignment. So this is a good time again to look at our studio and just do some screen management. So up in the editor, I've got uh, the view of several files, of several uh, data sets that I probably don't need to look at again. So I'll go ahead and close them out. Uh, I've got some things in the global environment that I probably won't need. Close them out, uh, clear out the global environment. And uh, let's look at where I am looking into the files. I, I seem to be in looking at the common folder in the slides section, but I need to pick up the DA. So let me click on map 111. And I don't know why that popped up, but uh, I it. And click on DA. And I want the one on categorical data. A buffer pops up, but I don't own this stuff yet. I need to go to File, Save As, dot, 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 point back home, twiddles, OK. Now I'm pointing back into home directory, double click on submit, pointing back into submit directory, save right away. And now this is a buffer up here where I'm waving my mouse for a file that I really own back in my submit directory. So I can make some changes. We do our usual thing. Um, change the name. So I'm going to say home of white. You'll say your name. And let's knit it up, take a look at what we've got to do. And I'll go ahead and pop this up big. It will pop up into uh, a separate tab of whatever browser you're using to get to our studio. And it says, you're going to need to make sure that package tiger stats is attached. Okay, I've got that attached. I've got that open info attached as well. Um, Going to need to review the data set that uh, this assignment is based on. Oh, it's that Fairlander data set that we studied in the previous section. Um, so you can get some help on that if you were to run Help Fairlander. But um, I'll just think about how each row was a pitch thrown by Justin Verlander in one of four seasons from the year, five seasons from the year 2009 through the year 2012. And there were some variables that we would like to particularly pay attention to in this data set. Speed, the speed of the pitch in miles per hour, pitch underscore type, the type of pitch that he threw. And uh, there are six types of pitches that Justin Verlander throws. A changeup, a curveball, a four-seam fastball, and a two-seam fastball, as well as sliders. Other pitches can throw other other pitchers throw other types of pitches like knuckleballs. Verlander is stuck to these six. A third variable we'll be interested in is batter underscore hand. And that's, for each pitch, you're looking at whether the batter took a left-hand stance or a right-hand stance over the plate. So that's not whether the batter is personally left or right-handed. A lot of batters learn how to take both stances because that you, you can choose one that's advantageous for, a certain, for going up against a certain pitcher. So L is going to stand for the left-hand stance and R for the right-hand stance. Okay, let's go ahead and head back to our studio. Oops, wrong our studio. And uh, let's just get a view of Fairlander. Every row is a pitch. And here's the pitch type variable. Here's the speed variable, and here's your batter hand variable. Okay, 
head back to the VA. Uh, you'll recall that we've looked at a density plot of the speeds of all the pitches previously. Uh, we made a plot with a command like this here. And uh, that density plot is shown here. And uh, there's a little rug of individual values underneath it. And one of the things that really stood out was that the, there was one pitch that was really slow. It was under 60 miles per hour. And so, you know, it's forcing the density plot to just like go really, really close to the x-axis and reach out and just barely rise again over that one value. And so that's a lot of wasted space, you know, in your graph. It would be cooler to just kind of look at this part of the plot. Um, and who knows, that that pitch could be there in error. It might have been not really an official pitch, uh, not a serious pitch, and shouldn't have been in the data set anyway. So uh, maybe we should just remove it. And it says that you should run some code that removes, that creates a new data set that's the same as the old one, except it's not going to have that one slow pitch in it. Uh, the basic idea is that you start with the Verlander data set and you pipe it in to this command called filter. And the filter command removes rows from a data set. And it's only going to keep the rows where this condition inside the parenthesis is true. It's only going to keep the rows where speed is bigger than 60. And so that's going to let all these pitches get in, but it's going to knock out this one here. OK, so we need to go back to our studio and look in our, our markdown document. I'll go to the table of contents, review the data set, and head down to this row here. We need to, to create this fair small by running this code chunk. And so we run it. And sure enough, now fair small comes up in our global environment. You could click it up for a view if you wanted. It's going to look the, almost the same as Fairlander, except that you know it's lacking that one row for the slow pitch. I'm going to go ahead and uh, knock out the Fairlander from my editor since I don't need it. Because it says we're going to work with Fair Small from here on out. OK. So let's see what else we've got coming up. The first section where you've actually got any questions is this section, Contingency Tables and Bar Plots, where they make a little tally table. Looks like you're uh, studying here. Um, pitch type, one categorical variable. So uh, that's not really a contingency table. That, that usually refers to two-way tables. This is just going to be a little one-way table for one categorical variable. And uh, they make it here. And so this shows you the number of the different pitches that he threw. Like he threw 2,550 change-ups out of a total of 15,306 pitches. Notice that's based on the fair small data set. That's how many pitches are in this new smaller data set. Um, so they give you a code template for how to make percentages for the same data. And you're supposed to work with that template and make a percent down here in this uh, answer key, in this answer section. So for example, you would uh, head down and you would say, here's, here's that uh, code template. And in the answer section that goes with it, I'm going to paste it in. And then you would start filling in. You can see that the format equals percent is going to give you percentages instead of numbers. But you've got to fill in the right variable here. The variable ain't going to cut it. You're going to have to fill in the right data set, you know, the fair small. So uh, you need to do that for yourself. If you just stop right here, you're just going to get like errors. If you uh, what else do we have on the way? 
I guess uh, you'll be asked some questions um, after you've made it, uh, questions where you need to like read the table and use that information to answer the question. And then, uh, oh, next uh, set of questions, relationship between two categorical variables, batter hand and type of pitch. So that's where you'll be making contingency tables. And uh, here's like a co-template for making contingency tables. And you'll be asked to make one for those two variables. And notice the directions. They say batter hand should show along the columns. Type of pitch should be along the rows. And so as you go down the table from row to row, we want to see the type of pitch change from change up to slider to curveball and all that kind of stuff. If you go across on the table, you'll change from a left-handed stance to a right-handed stance. So make sure that your table looks like that. Um, you'll do a similar thing for percents, column percents, and you'll uh, then describe the relationship between the two variables, type of pitch, and uh, the batter stance based on what you see in those column percents. And then there's a uh, final uh, section of questions about the relationship between a numerical variable speed and a categorical variable type of pitch. And you're going to work with it numerically using phase stats, working from a template to uh, correctly get phase stats for speed broken down by type of pitch. And you'll also examine this uh, graphically uh, it says you're going to need to make violin plots of the speeds of the various type of pitches. And if you feel like it, go for everything by adding on jittered points. So you're going to have to look back in the slides for an example of how to make violin plots. I want to kind of train you to, to not do everything within the DA, but to, to, to look back for other places where you've seen examples of code and to grab it and modify it. So in this case, you would, you, know, you would need to head back to your slides and you would need to look through them to find the place where you are describing relationships between numerical and categorical uh, variables. And that's in that section on comparing numerical data across groups. And you, you, know, you wanna kind of review it reasonably slowly, don't flip too fast. But by the time you've done your review, you're going to see how to make a simple violin plot and how to make one with jittered points. So you'll be doing things like copy pasting this kind of code into the answer section or R code chunk and modifying it, changing the variables in the data set as needed, along with the X and Y axis labels to make your plot. And then you'll uh, answer some questions. Uh, no, you're just making a plot. Okay, so I think that's enough of a start on the DA. Uh, I think that you can, can go from there. So, see you later.